Kenya Nairobi. Time now is 12 minutes past 6. You are hereby informed that everybody is requested to stay at home. There should be no movement in town. The government has now been taken over by the military until further notice. There should be no movement of persons or vehicles from one place to another. The police should now assume the role of civilian until further notice. Wananchi usifadhaike kwa kuwa serikali ni ya jeshi na ni yao na itawatumikia sawa sawa wananchi wasifadhaike kwa kuwa Kenya Nairobi. The time now is 14 minutes past 6. You are hereby informed that a curfew has every, as everybody should be what? Declared. Everybody should what is, what is this? Stay. Everybody should stay at home. There should be no movement in town. The government has has now been taken over by the military until further notice. There should be no movement of, of persons or vehicles from one place to another. The police should now assume the role of civilian until further notice. Okay. A warning. The government has been taken by a very, very, very powerful group supported by the people. Wanainchi wenyewe na wanajesi wote. Or if you, wherever you are, cooperate, or you blame yourself. Thank you. Voice of Kenya. Oh, my God. 
teacher of Moy by the patriotic forces of our country. As I speak to you now, our country is fully and firmly under the control of our armed forces. Every care has been taken to make the revolution as bloodless as possible. Fellow Kenyans, over the past few years, this country has been shedding from an open to a closed, dictatorial, and inhuman society. The fundamental principles for which many of our people sacrificed their lives during the heroic struggle for independence have been compromised in the interest of a few greedy and irresponsible bandits. Over the past six months, we have witnessed with the disgust the imposition of a de, a de jure one-party system without the people's consent, arbitrary arrest and the detention of innocent citizens, censorship of the press, intimidation of individuals, and general violation of fundamental human rights. This ruthless oppression and repression is reminiscent of the past colonial days which Kenyans thought were buried at independence. A gang, a gang of local tyrants has emerged whose only function is to terrorize and intimidate with senseless warnings, rampant, co rampant corruption, tribalism, nepotism has made life almost intolerable in our society. The economy of this country is in shambles due to corruption and mismanagement. The cost of living in Kenya today is among the highest in the world. Wananchi can no longer afford to meet the basic requirements of life due to exorbitant prices of the basic necessities such as food, housing, housing rent, transport. Above that, Kenyans are among the highest taxed people in the world today. Wananchi under these circumstances, our armed forces have headed the people's call to liberate our country once again from the forces of, of oppression and exploitation in order to restore liberty, dignity, and social justice to the people. In doing this, we have proved to the rest of the world that no individual or group of people can permanently subjugate or take away the freedom which our fathers and grandfathers so gallantly fought to bring to this country. Like the, like the British imperialists, the same fate will befall whoever attempts to tamper with our freedom. Countrymen, it is not the intention 
of the military to stay in power indefinitely. As soon as the situation allows, elections will be held and Wananchi will be given an opportunity to choose their leaders. Our immaculate task is to stamp out corruption and set out a concerted program of development for Kenya. We will continue with the original policies which this country set at independence and which have been eroded over the years, thus giving rise to the current sad state of affairs. A number of administrative and security measures will be announced in due course. This revolution is entirely an internal affair and our friends have nothing to fear. We will strengthen relations with our neighboring countries and we will continue to champion the policy of non-alignment and non-interference in the internal affairs of other countries. As for now, the constitution has been suspended and a national liberation council has been set up to preside over the affairs of the government and state. All the detainees and political prisoners are released forthwith with immediate effect. Long live Kenya. Long live the People's Redemption Council. Thank you very much. This is a statement on behalf of all the students of Kenya. On behalf of the students and the people of Kenya, we, the University of Nairobi students, register our wholehearted and unconditional support for the August 1st revolution organized by the Kenya People's Redemption Council. We humbly request our new popular government to accord us the freedom we have always cried for. Thank you. Service for the Voice of Kenya time is 28 minutes to 9. All prisoners serving under two years imprisonment should be released forthwith. Those under police custody to be released as well. All political detainees should be released immediately. Wananchi are hereby reminded that they should stay indoors and observe the curfew until further notice. <laughs> Yeah, 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 yeah
shooting broke out in Nairobi and it was soon discovered that it originated from a small group of rebels from elements of Kenya Air Force Embakasi. Quick action by the army and the Kenya police put the rebellion down and the situation in the city is now back to normal. The government would like to assure the general public that law and order has been restored and they may go about their business normally. The culprits will be dealt with severely and in accordance with the law. A further statement will be issued later. Anyone who takes part in looting the shops will be severely punished. I just remind you once again that everything is back to normal with the rebel forces suppressed by armed forces led by General Mulinge and commanded by Major General M.H. Mohammed, Deputy Army Commander, Major H.K. Njoroge of Army Headquarters, Major Tom Wanambisi of Army Headquarters, Major Oyeho Kahawa Garrison, Lieutenant Colonel Viga, Army Headquarters, Captain C.N. Difu, 7th Battalion, Major Mulingo, Department of Defense, Major Cheboy, 7th Battalion, Major Kiretu, Department of Defense, Lieutenant Kamoto, Ordnance Depot, Lieutenant Ngatia, Air Cavalry, Lieutenant Jero, 7th Battalion, Lieutenant Mauka, 
Captain Serem and Second Lieutenant Kirwa were three of them from 7th Battalion. <laughs> of Kenya it's 29 minutes to one an announcement going out to our uh, staff here film processors anybody listening in at this time is requested to report to broadcasting house voice of Kenya for very urgent work any film processor listening in is requested to report urgently to broadcasting house Kenya ndiyo ni mikono ni mwetu Tushiriki ya neni kuhijenda Kwa mwito wa upendo amani na umoja Bila shaka tutashina This is the voice of Kenya The government today announced the closure of the University of Nairobi and Kenyatta University College with immediate effect Announcing the closure the government observed that this had been necessitated by the unwarranted participation of university students in widespread looting in the city following the infamous disturbances caused by armed rebels from the Kenya Air Force. The students, the government noted, had also issued a statement supporting the anti-government rebels and publications. The students will be required to proceed straight to their home areas and report directly to their chiefs. Those who defy this directive will be deemed to be furthering their destructive attitudes and will be dealt with firmly. Nini 
President Daniel Arap Moy this morning made an extensive tour of the city of Nairobi and witnessed the massive damage caused to property by the armed rebels of the Kenya Air Force over the weekend. In another development, President Daniel Arap Moy has highly commended the Kenya Army, the Kenya Navy, the police and the administration police for their unflinching loyalty to him and in defense of the nation. Prime Minister Andrew Johanoth of Mauritius today announced that he would take part in the Organization of African Unity Summit scheduled to open in Tripoli on Thursday. In Zimbabwe, five more followers of minority leader Joshua Komo have been charged with participating in an attack on Prime Minister Robert Mugabe's official residence in June this year. And a news dispatch from Tel Aviv says that Israeli forces have captured over 7,000 Palestinian militants since the start of the Lebanese offensive last June. His Excellency President Daniel Arab Moy this morning made an extensive tour of the city of Nairobi and witnessed the massive damage caused to property by the armed rebels of the Kenya Air Force over the weekend. President Moy expressed sorrow at damages caused when the rebels, jointly with the students of the University of Nairobi, broke into shops in all city streets and other surrounding areas and hauled away virtually all the things they could lay their hands on. The president, driving with his usually minimum presidential motorcade, greeted thousands of Onainchi who danced with joy, shouting, Nyayo, Nyayo, as the president proceeded to his Arambe office. 
In another development, President Daniel Arap Moy has highly commended the Kenya Army, the Kenya Navy, police and the administration police for their unflinching loyalty to him and in defense of the nation. In a statement to the nation issued at State House Nairobi this morning, President Moy said that the gallant forces had demonstrated their loyalty by crushing the Air Force rebels who wanted to bring chaos and anarchy in the country. Terming the loyal forces as staunch Nyayo forces, the President stressed that they would continue to protect the country and Wananchi at all costs. The President expressed dismay at the big loss of property Wananchi had suffered following the disturbance. He commended students. He condemned students of Nairobi University whom he said had participated in looting goods in Nairobi together with the rebels. The President thanked Wananchi for their cooperation in collecting guns and handing them over to the police and other government authorities. He also thanked Wananchi for their loyalty and asked them to continue cooperating with the authorities by handing over guns and ammunition they may find abandoned by rebels and report any suspicious character to the police. The president noted that Wananchi had experienced difficulties in the, in the past few days and assured them that the situation was under control. He called on Wananchi to travel normally by the Kenya bus and other means of transport and reassure them that the government would assist them in all ways in case of difficulty. Present were the Chief Secretary, Mr. Jeremiah Kireini, and the Permanent Secretary in the Office of the President in charge of Development Coordination and the Cabinet Office, Mr. Simon Nyachai. The Chief Secretary, Mr. Jeremiah Kireini, has asked civil servants and employees of parasitical bodies who have not yet reported on duty following the recent disturbances to report to their places of work immediately. In a statement issued from a state house, Mr. Kireini added that all public servants should report to work during normal working hours. He, however, reminded employees to observe curfew hours, which, be, which is between 6 p.m. and 7 a.m. The Nairobi PC, Mr. Fred Waiganjo, has appealed to Nairobi residents who may be having any of the goods which were looted in the city following Sunday's disturbances to surrender them to the government. Mr. Waiganjo assured residents that those who surrendered the goods would not be victimized. He said that some goods have been surrendered in various administration centers in the city and that their owners will be called to collect them later. During a tour of Nairobi City, Mr. Waiganjo told shopkeepers and wholesalers that there was no food shortages and that they should not create an artificial shortage. He said that the Kenya bus services will be in full operation tomorrow so that Wananchi could be able to travel to their places of work. <music>
ya taifa sauti ya Kenya Nairobi sasa ni saa na nusu saa na nusu popote pale ulipo msikilizaji tunakukaribisha kusikiliza salamu za alasiri Tomba kibako mikono balo kola badoki Kona kuliko ya ngana yo shanta Tomba kibako mikono balo kola badoki Kona kuliko ya ngana yo shanta Na mwaka loko no ye Na mwaka loko no shanta Na mwaka loko no shanta Ya ngana yo se mafuela ye Na mwaka loko no e, na mwaka loko no shantan, na mwaka loko no shantan, ya ngana yote mafuela e. Alina bahati ya salamu za lafiri kwa siku ya leo ni Kali C.W. Nyongeso kwa semu za School of Transport Kawa Garrison. Zako pina kwanza zimsikie mama na baba kwa simu za makongeni farm makongi farm Clement Wekesa akio simu za ma, za makongi farm Rosemary akiwa hapo makongi farm Njomba Mpendwa Lawrence Kuloba akio simu za makongi farm Bibi Mpendwa Peres Peres akio simu za makongi farm Ujumbe mwambiwa mimi ni mzima ni kazi tu RSN John wambuo kusemo za 9th Kenya Army Moi Barak za kwapenda kwanza zinsikie baba na mama kusemo za Kilungu Kivani Jenny Pandenya kwa Moi Barak Eldoret watu wako wote kusemo za Mavia Meu mama wanajeshi wote popote pale wanaposikiliza ndugu yako Benjamin Kinyi akusemo za Kahawa Garrison ujumbe mwambiwa na RSM John Wambua ye ni mzima wala hana neno. Na kuita David S Ole Kole ukisemo za Moi Barak Eldoret za kwa pena kwanza zisikie bibi yako Dorcas Kole akisemo za Soy B Eldoret na Paso Koina pamoja na Lepasha Sadira pamoja na bibi yake akisemo za Naro Joseph Kole na Roiko Yogere na Pabula Sadira wote wakisemo za Nairobi. Ujumbe mwambiwa msiwe na wasiwasi sisi ni wazima hatuna neno. Samuel Kiptanoe Arab Kogo kwa pumwani Nairobi za kwapenda kwanza za Kichao Stephen Protich Arab Chumba kwa simu za Kisumu Town. Mama Sofina Kogo na watoto wa Kongoro Village John Kebik Big Bay Arab Malewa kwa simu za Nakuru Town. Vile vile ni kwake Naftali Arab Sambu pamoja na Henry Arab Kichweng na kwa Nandi Kiplangat Arab Tho pamoja na Bernard Arab Magut wa kesimu za Nandi jumbe mimi niko salama sali mimi
Walitu waji ya safari Tujuyi tutafika lini mama Safari, safari Safari, safari Oma mababa e Mama na baba o Na wahu mea mu Mungu wa walinde Na piga santi Na shukuru wa zazi wangu Muli vyo nilinda Wakati wa udogo wangu Sasa mimi ni mkugwa Nimeanza safari yangu Kutafuta maisha Kutafuta maisha kweli Nijiteke meye Anijiteke meye Kisha anza kufanya kazi Niwale teye zawadi Zaku wa shukuru njini kwa sababu Nyinyo mungu wangu wa dunia Safari yangu ndefu Safari yangu ndefu Bado ni nasafiri Sote tu nasafiri Safari ya uzima amama Safari, safari, safari Satisa kasoro dakika 21 Satisa kasoro dakika 21 tunaendelea mbele na salamu za alasiri ambapo unashika ombi lako Hussein Korano kwa simu za Mwai Barat. Za kusalamu apenda kwanza zimfikie mama na baba wa Kiwaisiolo Muhammad Korano wa Kiwaisiolo, Nuria Hussein ya Kiwaisiolo, Malka Farah kwa simu za Isiolo. Jumbe mwambiwa kula na kulipa ndio mtindo wa kisasa. Cyprus wanyoiki kwa simu za Nairobi za kwa kwanza zimfikie bwana na bibi za Kayo Mwiruri kwa kusemu za Nyandarwa High School bwana na bibi Justin Nganga kwa kusemu za Muruka Village bwana na bibi Kinyu Kinyukia kwa kusemu za Kandara bwana na bibi Pius Ngonya kwa kusemu za Rwesambu ujumbe mimi ni mzima wala sina neno kadi niombele yangu kutoka kwako David Gichiri Mauro kwa kusemu za Moi Barat Eldoret za kusalamu apenda kwanza zimfikie bibi Josephine Wangari Gichiri popote pale unaposikiliza mama na baba wote popote pale unaposikiliza ujumbe mwambiwe sisi ni wazima wala hatuna neno na kuita Joseph Ayoti Osubo kwa sehemu za second brigade headquarters Gilgil za kusalamu apenda kwanza zisikie bibi yako mpendwa redeni Kenya Radio says loyal troops have crashed in attempts to overthrow President Daniel Arap Moi. But correspondents say the latest situation is still not clear. The radio 
says the attempted coup involved men from the Air Force base at Embakasi, about five miles from the capital. The first news of the coup attempt came in a broadcast which said what it called the corrupt government of President Moy had been overthrown because it had departed from the path of democracy. Three hours later, another broadcast said the rebellion had been crushed. The broadcast gave few details of the fighting, but reports from Nairobi said that loyal troops reoccupied the radio station after heavy shooting. There was also shooting in other parts of the capital and on the road to the international airport. A number of Luthers are said to have been shot dead. Latest reports say the authorities appear to be in control in the city center, but the situation in other parts of the town was unclear and several large explosions were reported late in the afternoon. The president was apparently out of the city at the time of the attempted takeover, but is now understood to have returned. The attempt to depose President Moy by force came after several weeks of argument in Kenya over the final introduction of a one-party state two months ago and detention without trial. There's been considerable opposition from academic circles and the press to some of the president's measures, including the detention of eight university lecturers and the expulsion from the ruling Kanu party of prominent opposition leaders. President Moy, who came to power four years ago, accused the troublemakers of trying to upset the political equilibrium in, K in Kenya and said his administration was prepared to take all necessary measures against those who spent their time finding fault with the way the nation was run. This news comes to you in the World Service of the BBC. The students will be required to proceed straight to their home areas and report directly to their chiefs. Those who defy this directive will be deemed to be furthering their destructive attitudes and will be dealt with firmly. The meeting was held this morning with President Daniel Arup Moore in the chair. Government sources say the weekend attempted coup in which a group within the Kenyan Air Force tried to overthrow the president has been fully contained and that life is returning to normal. On the other hand, the shock to the Kenyan political system has been considerable. Since earlier this year, President Arap Moy has been ruling with a very firm hand, and the government has detained a number of its leading critics. All right, from Nairobi, Charles Harrison has been telling me about the law that the Kenyan government is likely to make in the aftermath of the coup attempt. I think the immediate question for them is to round up all those who were responsible for the events of the weekend. And a very big hunt is now taking place to find out who they are and to make sure that they are brought to book. Now, the next steps after that, I suppose, will have to include a review of them. Now, the Kenyan Air Force is being widely regarded as the of this political action, the most unsuccessful coup, but are there any indications that discontent spread beyond the ranks of the Air Force? Not so far as we know, we really don't know who was precisely involved in this affair. It was one section of the Air Force. Whether in fact they were supported by other people, we don't know. For instance, they were joined by quite a number of university students after they had announced the takeover of the government. But I think it's more likely that the students didn't know what was going on until they heard the announcement on the radio. Now, in recent weeks and months, uh, President Daniel Arab Moy has been taking a much tougher line with his critics uh, and indeed detaining some of the more prominent of them. Do you suspect that perhaps these actions played a part in the attempt to unseat him? It uh, is not clear at all whether that was the reason why the two attempt was launched or whether it was merely a popular excuse which was brought forward by the plotters with the idea of attracting public support to their attempt to overthrow the government. One has got the feeling since uh, President Arab Moy took power a few years ago that the Kenyan political uh, setup was very stable and indeed the Western nations have tended to assume that it's been stable. Do these events of the weekend suggest to you that we may be moving into a rather more adventurous era? 
That certainly is a possibility, and I think uh, not only will the Kenyan government leaders be looking at this matter, but uh, no doubt outside observers will be. Because it's always difficult to know how deep-seated movement like this was, but I think it's also significant that it was nipped in the bud very quickly, and that the majority of the armed forces were, shall we say, sufficiently loyal to the president to bring the matter under control. To what degree would the public state of the Kenyan economy be relevant, perhaps, to political protests and dissatisfaction with the present government? It certainly is because of rising prices, increasing taxation, and uh, higher cost of living do play a part in bringing public discontent. I think the government here is very aware of this situation, and uh, they have really been quite frank about it. But the simple fact is that Kenya cannot isolate itself from a world economic crisis, and uh, this country cannot escape the economic problems that other countries are facing. Charles Harrison calling 24 hours from Nairobi. Kibishani saa zenu hivi sasa ni saa 12 kasoro dakika 15. Wachana na huyo ndio kwa ke Charles Akwabi ukiwa Luande wa Pennsylvania Rose wa Manje ukilipanga mahanga Payson Pe, Khaemba na Endeje Lumba kwa sibiza hapo Moi Bara Baada huyo basi vitasa ndio kwa ke announcing the imposition of the curfew in Nairobi and Nyanyuki yesterday President Moi said Tulijishi na jeshi na majeshi yote ya Kenya 
Nataka niseme kwa yale yaliyotokea leo asubuhi kwa muda mfupi iliyoletea wanaiba mazwazi mengi sasa imeangamizwa na kesi letu la jikafu na polisi na nawashukuru wao sana kwa juhudi zao za kuangamiza hawa maharamia ambao waliweka wanaiti katika hali ya wasiwasi wali popote mliko angalieni kwamba mnafanya kazi zenu za kawaida lakini kutoka leo saa 12 mpaka saa moja kesho asubuhi tutakuwa kuna kafi yaani hakuna mtu ambaye anatembea katika mji wa Nairobi kutoka saa 12 leo jioni mpaka saa moja viongozi wa majeshi wa mlinge wanasawe na mume wao na kwa serikali ya Kenya na kwa wananchi wa Kenya jambo ambalo ni muhimu pale hapa kulinda maisha ya wananchi na hawa wamekaa hivyo hivyo na mimi nasema Mungu awabariki na wataendelea kutunza na kulinda maisha ya wananchi na mtu wote ambaye atajaribu kuvunja nyumba za watu au jamaa jamani za watu atakabiliwa na adhabu ile kali mambo mengine yatafuata baadaye asante in another statement the government has appealed to all members of the public to cooperate with the security forces and report any suspicious characters they might come across for apprehension and interrogation the statement issued from the office of the president said that any weapon or ammunition found anywhere should be handed over to the security forces within the shortest possible time a person who attempts to harbor or provide facilities to suspicious characters will be considered hostile and dealt with severely in making the appeal the government is mindful of the fact that such rebellious characters uh, would turn and, and harm the same people who will have offered them accommodation and facilities meanwhile the government has announced the closure of the university of nairobi and kenyatta university college with immediate effect the closure affects both campuses announcing the closure the government observed that this has been necessitated by the unwarranted participation of the university students in a widespread looting in the city following the infamous disturbances the government noted that the students had also issued a statement supporting the anti-government rebels and publications the students will be required to proceed straight to their home areas and report directly to their chiefs those who defy the directive will be deemed to be furthering their destructive attitudes and will be dealt with After Sunday's abortive coup, the speedy restoration of order in Kenya is necessary not only for the good of that country, but for black Africa's reputation and the protection of critical Western interests. In recent times, Kenya's tensions and troubles have been mounting. They include depressed economic conditions, ideological differences and tribal rivalries, 
which erupted in the western part of the country at the end of last year and cost some 200 lives. Earlier this year, President Daniel Arap Moy established Kenya constitutionally as a one-party state. Although the ruling, and now the only party, is dominated by the Kikuyu, he argued that this was the one way of uniting the nation. There was wide opposition to the move. In May, a former vice president and member of the Luo tribe, Oginga Odinga, was expelled from the government ranks. One of his top lieutenants and a member of parliament was detained, and so were six lecturers at Nairobi's university. In June, the country's most authoritative newspaper, The Standard, wrote that a plot had been uncovered to replace the government with a Marxist regime. There were many signs of instability, and yet Kenya has been one of the rare success stories in independent black Africa. Committed to free enterprise, its economy outstripped those of its socialist neighbors. It maintained a relatively open society, and in 1978, again an unusual occurrence in black Africa, there was an orderly succession when Kenyatta died and Moy took over. Kenya was one of the few countries in black Africa to inspire confidence in the Western world, and it was an important buffer against the southward extension of Soviet influence established with the help of the Cubans in Ethiopia. After the invasion of Afghanistan by the Russians at the end of 1979, the Carter and then the Reagan administration sought facilities to sustain American naval and air power in the region of the volatile Persian Gulf. They turned to Kenya. The arrangements were duly made and they were sharply criticized by Odinga. Since then, the United States has spent millions of dollars on enlarging the harbor at Mombasa to enable it to accommodate vessels as large as aircraft carriers. Last March, an American professor of political science, Stephen Spiegel, wrote of Kenya in the influential magazine Commentary, saying that it offered facilities and a geographical location that could be critical to future United States efforts. These are some of the implications of Sunday's attempted coup. President Moy has proved himself to be an able leader, and it is important for his own country and others that his authority should be restored. You've been listening to news commentary from Radio RSA.